Hello, and welcome to the Unrest Podcast. I'm Caitlin Stansel. And I'm Madeline Green. Are you subscribing to the Unrest Podcast? Because if you're not, we would love for you to do so. So you can stay up to date on all of our real life hunts. <laughs> Too cheesy? <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> welcome, everyone. It's almost Christmas. The holidays are here. I'm sitting in front of my Christmas tree and our electric fireplace. It feels so Christmassy. Have not bought a gift, not one. <laughs> yeah, I'm an early Christmas shopper. And even throughout the year, if I see something that is just like perfect for that person, I'll go ahead and get it because I don't want to forget about it, you know? See, that's that's the smart way to go about it. What I do is screenshot it. And then you can't ever find your screenshot. (laughs) Then I forget about it. And then it's the week before Christmas. And I'm like, crap, even if I want to get them that it's not going to ship here in time. So then I'll get on Amazon and just buy a bunch of crap. (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) See, I like don't love to get the gifts that you, you can tell someone just was like went to Walmart and, oh, I'll get you these chocolate covered cherries. I mean, I like those, but I understand (laughs) you always give really like thoughtful gifts and I like thoughtful gifts too. And I have great ideas, but it's the fact that like I put it off and put it off until like you can't get it shipped here in time. Yeah. (laughs) And then I'm like, oh, maybe next year. (laughs) Darn mail service. (laughs) Hey, but you know what? We have an exciting Christmas announcement to make. Madeline, please share. (laughs) We are trying to come up with a name for our mascot. It's a little ghost. He's so cute. He or she or they and them and it and we. The ghost is cute and it needs a name. And Caitlin drew this ghost all by herself. And we are doing a giveaway for Christmas. You have to comment what our ghost should be called and then we'll send you a free little care package we have all kinds of stickers that caitlin drew herself and we came up with the designs and we love them and we want to share them with you guys but we we need a name for our ghost and we know you guys will give us a name so make sure you keep an eye on our instagram and our facebook that's where you're going to want to comment Then we're going to collect those name ideas and then announce the winner. What date shall we announce, Madeline? We will announce the winner on the, let's do January 1st. Okay. I like it. January 1st, start the new year with a new name for our little cute ghost. Awesome. I'm excited for a new year. (laughs) Me too. But at the same time, (laughs) but at the same time, I have so much to finish up for work. I'm like, I need another month. <laughs> and speaking of another month, our real life <laughs> has nothing to do with that. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. If you can't tell, we've been drinking. And speaking of drinking, our real our life real hunt. Life hunt. <laughs> Today we have a story that was sent to us by Rachel. So please take a listen. When I was... 22 years old in 2004, I had moved into a building in Edmonds, Washington. This building had five apartments on the top of it, and there was a business below it. Apartments one, two, three, and four all shared a bathroom, but apartment five had a fireplace and its own bathroom. I lived in apartment five. I was there for five years and I began to live there by myself. Although a couple months in, my boyfriend moved in. I never noticed anything weird. I had two cats. I had a cat named Molly and a cat named Narisa. And they acted completely normal. They went outside, they came inside, 
we were on the second floor, so they couldn't really go out and about in the town of Edmonds, but it seemed like everything was fine. Right around year three, my boyfriend and I had broken up and I was going to give living on my own another try. I had had tons of friends come over to keep me company and nothing really weird had happened up to that point. Um, Every now and then some people would say they would feel weird drafts or cool spots in my apartment or they would see people walking down the other side of the stairs when they were coming up the backside. So people would go down the front side of the stairs, but they would never hear the door close. And they were heavy doors. You could hear the two exterior doors of those apartments uh, in any apartment you were in open and close. I never thought much about that. Um, It didn't really concern me. I believe in ghosts and I've had many experiences, but nothing that made me be concerned about that at all. Well, one night I had a friend spend the night and he was taking off his shoes and he put them in the corner of the bedroom and we were sitting there talking. He was sitting on the bed and I was standing in the doorway. So we were about eight feet away from each other. And I had begun to turn around and saw out of the corner of my eye one of his shoes come flying across the room and almost hit him in the face. At that point, he said, I'm going to go ahead and leave. I don't know what that was. So he grabbed his stuff and left and nothing else happened for a couple weeks. I would say about three weeks later, it was in the evening and I was about ready to go to bed. So it was about 9 p.m. or later And my white cat, Molly, was staring up in the corner near the entryway of the apartment, but still in the living room. And I could see her and she's just staring, not wagging her tail, but full black eyes. And I thought, well, that's really weird. Clearly there's something there. So I walked over to her and I picked her up and brought her over to the couch. And she instantly went back to that spot and kept looking. In the morning when I woke up, I went to feed her and my other cat and she was still staring in that same spot. Did not look like she had moved all night. She was not hissing or anything. So it didn't alarm me. I thought there's probably something there, but it's obviously not malicious if my cat does not have a problem with it. So no big deal. What about my business? About six months after that happened, my younger brother, who's five years younger than me, came to live with me. He had just graduated and he wanted to live on his own, but not really on his own. So he got a job and asked if he could live with me. And I told him, yeah, no problem. Come, You can come live with me. So I had two bedrooms in this apartment. One of them faced the top of another building so I could see the rooftop of that building out my window. And then right next to it, there was a shared closet in between us. So if you opened the closet doors, you could crawl through to the other room. And that other room was facing the hallway. It had a window as well, but if you opened it, it would just go into the hallway. You wouldn't see outside at all. Well, my younger brother is very macho manly. I could never see him really being afraid of anything. So one night after living with me for about two months, he came into my room and woke me up and said, can I sleep with you? And I thought that was really weird. I said, why? He said, because there's people outside my window and they're really loud. And I thought, oh, the neighbors probably have some people over. That's fine. Sure. So he went ahead and he slept with me. Well, the next night at about 3 a.m., which was the time he came in the night before, he said the same thing. And I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, there's people that walk by my window and they're really loud. And I thought, well, this is really weird. What are you talking about? So I let him sleep with me again. And then the next night I went 
and slept in his room and set my alarm for 2.45 a.m. And I just watched and waited. And I saw three figures. They were silhouettes, dark black, as if someone was walking by the window, but the light was coming from the wall to give them a shadow. It was odd. They walked down the hallway. I quickly opened the window to look and see and they vanished. There was nothing there. So that was a little weird and kind of creeped me out. When I got back to my bed, not the spare bedroom bed, because then I was, I didn't want to sleep in that room either. Um, I got back in my bed and I had woke my little brother up from just moving around. And the weirdest thing happened inside that shared closet there was a scraping noise. Now, there was a shelf inside that closet about four feet up, so you could hang long things, but you could also store items above the shelf. And I could hear scratching, one long scratch, and it went slow, and it went the whole length of the closet. Now, if you were inside the closet, there was no way you could scratch from all the way at the top, all the way to the bottom. So I thought, well, maybe it's an animal of some sort. I opened the doors. There was nothing there. I went into my brother's room and I turned the light on. There was nothing there. Went back to my bedroom and I thought, huh, that's really weird. And I was still really creeped out because I had seen the figures in the hallway and I thought, well, surely it's not related. Well, I climbed back in bed and my white cat, who I believe can see everything, starts growling at the closet and the scratching starts again. And it goes on for about three or four more scratches. I would say that's roughly, roughly five minutes. Um, I'm deathly afraid. My younger brother no longer wants to live in this apartment and he ends up moving out in the next week. Um, once that happened, I didn't really put two and two together that there was a malicious spirit. I thought that maybe the spirit didn't like my brother or maybe someone had irritated it in some way and now it's just trying to be made known. So my brother moves out and I have, again, all kinds of friends come in and out. No big deal. This one woman comes into my apartment that I was friends with and she said, somebody else is here. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, somebody else is in your apartment. And I said, okay, should I be scared? She's like, no, they're not malicious. I said, well, who is it? She's like, it's a spirit of some sort. I can feel it. I said, huh, okay, interesting. I said, well, my cat, Molly, sometimes hisses up at the corner. She's like, yeah, I can, I can see that. That's, that's interesting. She's like, I don't really want to come back here, though. I'm sorry, we can meet and have lunch elsewhere, but I don't really want to come back to your apartment. I said, okay. That was a little weird because if it wasn't malicious, there was no reason why I would think somebody would not want to come back. But she did not ever end up coming back. Right before I moved out, about three weeks before I moved out, I had met my now husband and he proposed to me and asked me to marry him. So I was beginning to pack my things slowly, taking my time because I had another month of rent that I had already paid. And I was sleeping one night and both of my cats were they usually sleep with me. They were on each side of me, which was totally normal. And I wake up to this deep growl from my white cat. And I open my eyes and she is facing me, looking up at the ceiling, growling. And my brown cat, Narisa, is on the other side of me, facing me, looking up at the ceiling, growling and hissing, just full-on attack mode. They're both fixated on the ceiling above me. That scared me so bad, I put my head under my covers 
and eventually fell back asleep. The next night, that happened again, but it was earlier in the night that it happened, and I was not quite asleep yet. I had no idea what was going on, but I knew that something was in the apartment, and it was not happy with me in some way. I I suppose because I was moving, I don't know. For the next three weeks, I heard doors slam all outside my apartment throughout the night, throughout the day. It continued to happen up until the moment I left the apartment. It was really unsettling, but I had talked to the landlord and he had no idea that there was any issues whatsoever. There was a woman that lived in the apartment before me and she lived in the apartment for five years, just like I did. And then before that, there was another woman. So I do not know if this situation happened because there was men, my brother and um, a friend that spent the night. It clearly had no problem with my boyfriend that lived there before my husband because it never had an issue. Although there were many different people that had moved into the other apartments throughout my stay of the five years. And most recently, a woman had moved in who was younger than me, but she had quite a few cats and friends that would come by. And some of her friends that I saw were a bit different. By different, I mean they they dressed gothic. They seemed um, unhappy looking, but it didn't really throw me off. That's, I was in Edmonds. It's close to Seattle. That's the norm. It didn't affect me, but I wonder still to this day if maybe one of them had done something and that brought either a spirit, a, a, a malicious spirit into the apartments, or if some catalyst flipped a switch and that changed what spirits were able to get in. I do not know, but that is my story with the apartment in Edmonds. I think my favorite part about the story is that the idea of these cats and how they obviously could sense some sort of presence within this apartment and the fact that they're growling and looking at certain areas of her room and stuff like that like obviously something is going on and I feel like cats are very they're very laid back so to hear a cat kind of like growling and you know on guard looking towards a certain area would scare me more more so than if it was like a dog or something I feel like dogs are more quick to like quick to bark and quick to do this cats are very low-key and they're not gonna just get their their hair in a fluff over nothing so I would definitely have been a little scared to live there (laughs) (laughs) no for sure and if I ever hear Winston make that sound we're gonna run out of there And cats too, just like at night, you know, that's when they kind of like do their thing. That's their fun environment. And then for them to be sort of in that state where they are not just on guard, but growling vocally, that sound is sort of scary enough in and of itself, like getting woken up from a deep sleep with that sort of sound. So I can just imagine, you know, how scary that was in that moment. But she says she went back to sleep. So I guess... (laughs) it all ended okay (laughs) yeah well and it's like you know she also talked about how it could be connected to men being in the house and how like her brother and had like experiences and that kind of thing and I mean if I was a ghost who had been jilted by men maybe I would go (laughs) I would only haunt the men (laughs) And, and maybe this ghost just really didn't like cats they were more of a dog person in life um and then something else is like living in an apartment like you obviously don't have a lot of control over what the people around you are doing so I think that was sort of an interesting concept that she brought up that you know it could have been some someone in one of the apartments around her that had sort of invited a spirit in to 
that building and it just happened to want to scare her cats. <laughs> right. And you talked about, you know, she obviously it didn't bother her too much, but, and I can kind of relate because we live in Papa's basement and you know, like I can hear him up there, like walking and stuff like that. Well, you just assume that that's him. I mean, so mm-hmm. like same thing, like when you're in an apartment and you hear something across like the walls and stuff like that, like you assume it's your neighbor, you know, until you realize it's not your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> it's something spooky in the closet. Right. Yeah. No, that's really true. Um, and, you know, she mentioned she was in Edmonds when this was happening and it's near Seattle and I'm going back up there in January and apparently they have a great ghost tour that goes into these tunnels that are like under some of the buildings. So I think I'm going to do it when I go and I'll report back. Yes. Take some video. Like. Yeah. Maybe I can interview uh, one of the tour guys. That would be awesome. Yes. Well, thank you, Rachel, for sharing your story with us. We appreciate it. And if you have a story, we would love to hear it. You can email us where? At the unrest podcast at gmail.com. Or you can message us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page and a group. And the group is fun because we like to post really interactive entertaining content there so join us over on facebook plus we're on tiktok as well also don't forget you're allowed to give us a review on apple Podcasts. please give us a five-star review if it's not five stars don't do it (laughs) and until next time (laughs) unrest in peace. peace